Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars. And today, I'll be going over the 10 oldest car manufacturers that are still around making new models today. I'll go over a brief history of the founding of each company and talk about each's journey to the modern day. On this channel, I talk about car history like this as well as news and culture, so let's get right into today's list, starting with the Ford Motor Company, which was founded back in June of 1903 and of course was founded by Henry Ford, who would revolutionize the manufacturing process by using the assembly line. Henry Ford would launch the company with the help of 12 investors, including the Dodge Brothers, and things really began to take off when the Model T debuted in 1908. Being one of the first mass-produced cars, Ford was able to make the car incredibly cheap at the time, meaning the automobile began to trickle down to the middle class. The moving assembly line was first put into action in 1913, further lowering costs. Ford has introduced numerous safety innovations over the decades and has been at the forefront of market changes, such as the creation of the Bronco at the dawn of the SUV age. The next company on the list is actually the result of Henry Ford's first attempt at creating an automaker. In August 1902, the Henry Ford Company was established in Detroit, but after disagreements with investors, Henry Ford left the company behind, only taking the rights to his name. The two largest investors called up engineer Henry Leyland to appraise the manufacturing plant in preparation to sell it. Instead, Leyland persuaded the investors to continue to produce cars with the help of his small engine designs, and the company began producing luxury vehicles. The company was named Cadillac after the founder of the city of Detroit, and after World War II, Harley Earl led design to create the iconic jet-inspired look that led to Cadillac's golden era that would last until the OPEC crisis. In 1999, the Escalade helped the Cadillac brand name significantly, and in the modern day, the brand has continued to improve with the V Performance brand and has introduced its first EV. In 1899, Fiat was founded in Turin, Italy by Giovanni Agnelli and several business partners, after Agnelli saw an opportunity to build upon the new invention of horseless carriages. After seven years, Fiat was able to produce over 1,000 cars per year and went public on the Milan Stock Exchange to garner funds for expansion. Agnelli would run the company until his death in 1945, and after the boost in production from World War II, Fiat would go all in on small passenger cars and produced over a million cars per year throughout the late 1960s and early 70s. Output has declined from all-time highs, but after merging with Chrysler and now into the Stellantis conglomerate, the company is growing once again. Also founded in 1899 is Renault, which was created by three French brothers, Louis, Marcel, and Ferdinand Renault. Within the first few years of operation, Renault saw the opportunity presented by taxi cars and was essentially the first company to produce volume car models that were largely for taxi use. This helped establish the brand name, but the brothers also saw racing as an opportunity to become known with other performance brands. From here, Renault has one of the more complicated histories, so in short, it would be crucial in developing tanks for World War I and improving upon its designs for World War II. After World War II, the company would be nationalized and and during its public ownership, the brand experienced a sharp decline as its international growth was limited. Renault wouldn't be privatized until 1996, and after this, the brand would take off with its newfound freedom, and over the past quarter of a century, has produced some of the most popular cars in Europe, like the Clio and Captura. The next company is the oldest American car company that is still around. Auto Car was founded by Louis Clark as the Pittsburgh Motor Vehicle Company in 1897, although it was renamed Auto Car two years later. Clark is responsible for numerous innovations, such as the porcelain spark plug and improving drive shafts. These innovations proved especially useful for heavy duty trucks, and by 1911, Auto Car was producing commercial vehicles exclusively. Auto Car built numerous models for the Army in World War II and after the war, the company had grown to 100 dealerships nationwide. In the post-war era, Autocar developed its current business model of creating industry-specific models such as garbage trucks and custom models for unique needs. Today, garbage trucks are still a huge part of Autocar's revenue. In 1894, Vaclav Clement set out to start a bicycle company in Bohemia with his partner Vaclav Lauren. By 1898, they finished building a factory and were able to produce and sell their first bicycles and quickly expand into motorcycles. In 1905, they expanded into automobiles and after experiencing success in both areas, Lauren and Clement would sell the company to arms manufacturer Skoda Works in 1925. The company would struggle for decades during National Socialist and Soviet occupation and the lack of economic resources and freedom would damage the reputation of the company. 
However, Skoda kept prices low, which would pay off as its economy opened up and its vehicles would begin to sell well in the United Kingdom and other parts of Western Europe. In 1990, the Jet government put Skoda on the market for privatization and Volkswagen would buy the entire company over the next 10 years. Volkswagen grew the brand across Europe and eventually across continents and in 2014, Skoda would sell over 1 million cars in a single year for the first time ever. The fourth oldest automaker that's still around is Mercedes-Benz. In 1883, Carl Benz founded Benz & Company with his Motorwagen in the works. He would get a patent for the vehicle in 1886 and began selling it in 1888. In 1890, fellow German engineers Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach would create Daimler Motors to manufacture internal combustion engines. Both companies would experience some level of success, but after World War I, Germany's hyperinflation would cripple them both, and they merged to streamline and cheapen the production process, and Mercedes-Benz was formed in 1926. World War II presented an incredible opportunity for many companies and Mercedes would produce tanks, aircraft, and submarines as well as luxury automobiles. Military and political figures such as Hitler, Goering, Mussolini, and Hirohito would be seen in a Mercedes-Benz and even after the Axis' defeat, Mercedes was able to catapult off of official use to sell the high-end cars. The brand exploded after Max Hoffman identified post-war United States as a prime market for European luxury cars. In the 1990s, Mercedes developed its performance reputation by working with and eventually acquiring tuning company AMG, and in 2016, the brand introduced EQ as its fully electric sub-brand. In 1862, Adam Opel would create Opel to manufacture sewing machines in Russelsheim, Germany. After 24 years of producing sewing machines, Adam went to expand into the growing market for bicycles. Adam Opel successfully ran the company until his death in 1895, and after his death, his family worked with Frederick Lutzman, who had been designing cars, and by 1899, the company was able to build its first models. Over the next decade, the company worked on developing cars that were reliable and cheap. However, the factory would be destroyed in a fire, and Opel had to rebuild. But by 1920, they were able to implement mass production to lower the cost of the vehicles even more, and in 1929, the Opel family sold 80% of the company to General Motors, who would eventually buy the remaining 20%. The company struggled through the Great Depression and World War II, but after World War II, the company would spend 30 years rebuilding a strong foundation and would go on to produce some of the most popular models in Western Europe. Up until 2008, Opel would be one of or the most profitable GM subsidiary each year. However, during the Great Recession, GM began looking to sell Opel to increase cash, but all the deals fell through. GM would hold on to Opel until 2017 when it would be sold to Peugeot. The second oldest car company that's still around is Tatra, which was founded in 1850 as a carriage company by Ignaz Shustala in Copperwind, Czech Republic. Shustala died in 1891 and the company was passed on to Hugo von Rosslerstam, who expanded the company into railroad cars. Hugo would purchase a Benz automobile in 1897 and was inspired to get in on the growing automobile industry. Tatra would design passenger cars and be the first company to focus on aerodynamic. After German occupation, Ferdinand Porsche would copy many aspects of the Tatra 97 to create the Beetle, and Volkswagen would have to settle with Tatra 30 years later for stealing the design. After World War II, the Soviet-controlled state would take over Skoda and Tatra and force Skoda to focus on passenger cars and Tatra to focus on commercial trucks, although Tatra would produce some car models through the 1990s. Today, the company focuses on custom-equipped and custom-built commercial vehicles. And finally, the oldest car company that's still around today is Peugeot. The Peugeot story starts all the way back in 1810 when the Peugeot family created a steel foundry in eastern France. The company grew into other manufacturing areas, and in 1880, Armand Peugeot decided to get into the bicycle industry. In 1889, the company designed a three-wheeled steam-powered car, but only produced four models. In 1890, Gottlieb Daimler sold Peugeot on the internal combustion engine, and the company was producing hundreds of cars by 1900. Peugeot grew production and became a notable force in racing as well. In the 70s and 80s, Peugeot bought Citroën and the European branch of Chrysler, developing the foundation of the relationship that would create Stellantis today. So there are the 10 oldest automakers that are still around today. 
Let me know what your favorite classic car company is in the comments below, and let me know what other top 10 lists you want to see in the future. On this channel, I post videos about car news, history, and culture, so take a look at the channel and subscribe for new videos every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.